they're delighted to say that we've got Sue Ronan with us now, the former Republic of Ireland manager, to look ahead to a sold-out Wembley this weekend, Sue, for what should be a really interesting final. A Germany team who I don't think too many people had down as potential winners here, but they're serial winners of this competition. And they're up against England, the hosts, who've been very impressive in their run to the final. A very interesting final ahead. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think um, the two best teams in the tournament have got to the final. Um, I was probably one of those doubters about um, Germany before the tournament started. Uh, they've been, you know, they they haven't been the Germany we've known over the last couple of decades for uh, uh, the last few years, really. Um, they've had a few dodgy results, even in the World Cup camp qualifying campaign, but. Once I saw them play, I, I was at their first game here in the in the group stages, and once I saw them play, I thought to myself, they're back to the Jeremy of old. You know, I thought they were strong, they were physical, they were organized, they were skillful, they were clinical, um, and they've gone about their business like that. So from from that moment on, I felt they'd be very hard to beat, and that's the way it's uh, proven. Um, on the other side, then you have England, obviously, uh, and again, I felt that they would be one of the teams to beat in this tournament. Uh, I think momentum has been building uh, in, in women's football here in England for a long time now. You know, they, they've we, we've spoken about it before the resources that has gone into the game. Uh, they've now got the best league in the world here for 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 uh, women. It's a professional league. Most of the top players are playing here. Um, and just the momentum has been building. And then, of course, at home advantage, you know, you, you, you can never bet against the hosts in, in any tournament. But I think they've proven uh, they deserve to be in the final along with Germany on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, with the exception of probably having to eke out the results a bit against Spain in the quarter final, England have swept their way very impressively to this final. You know, they're scoring goals freely. We can talk about Bet Mead against Alex Pop in the race for the Golden Boot in a few moments. But like England haven't looked like they're conceding that many chances. And the Spain game aside, you know, the perhaps maybe the the pressure of expectation of being the home team doesn't seem to have got to them. They've played some really nice football on the run to Wembley. They really have. Um, and you know, the opening game, I guess, they looked a little bit nervous against Austria in, in a packed old Trafford. Um, many of those girls probably had never played in, a, in, a, in front of a crowd like that. And of course, the expectations of a, a host team and opening the tournament. And, you know, everyone thought maybe they won that game 1-0 and, and we were wondering were they at their best. But as it turned out, Austria were actually a very good team, you know, and, and got to the quarterfinals themselves. Um, but after that then, yes, they obliterated a, a, a much fancy Norwegian team. They got by the North pretty easily. And then they were tested, of course, against Spain in the quarterfinals. And for 80 minutes, they were under the cosh. You know, they didn't really play well. But then uh, the coach made a couple of changes, a couple of tactical changes. And once they scored the first goal, there was no looking back. Um, they, they were always going to win that game. And I think Spain showed a little bit of a soft centre that I've mentioned, you know, like they, they've been very good and they are very good. They're missing they are missing two of their, their better players, of course, in this tournament. Um, but they, they have all the skill in the world. They play lovely football, but unfortunately that doesn't always lead to the goals that they should be scoring. And when you don't score goals, you're not going to win games, you know. But for me, England are looking very strong. They are starting games a little bit slowly, though. I was concerned again against Sweden the other night. Um, I'm sure you saw it. Sweden could have been 2-0 up after five or ten minutes. Mary Earps pulled off a great save. Um, another There was a, another opportunity, went to begging. So it's just taken them a little bit of a, a little while to get into their stride. So I, I, I think if that happens on Sunday, they could be in trouble. Um, but I, I still fancy them, I think, with the momentum there, the home crowd, and, and of course, the the front players they have I think they'll just about pick the Germans In Germany they've had a fantastic season so far a fantastic tournament they've only conceded one goal all the way to the final that's something that's really going to stand to them and England are going to have to probably break down to be able to, to get in on goal yeah, for sure. And that one goal was um, the other night against France. And it's really gone down as an OG now, with the goalkeeper, because uh, as you saw, it came off the, the upright and then back off her into the goal. So they've been very strong at the back. And, and again, when I go back to that first game, I saw them play against Denmark. Um, that stood out for me really. You know, I, I was really impressed with their back line and particularly the number five, um, Hegering. I, I think she's an outstanding centre half she she actually under hit a couple of passes the other night and maybe could have put her team in, in trouble but i really do think the back four the full backs are very good two centre halves are very good i think as a team they defend very very well and 
if you look at the the, the game against France, um, the danger the, the the front three front three for the French were the danger players, and they've been they're so pacey the wingers. Uh, Diani and Cascarino and they've been scoring goals for fun in other games but if you look at the way Jeremy defended against them it wasn't even just in the 1v1s you know no player was left isolated there was two and three players uh, ganging up on, on, on those danger players for France every time they got the ball so they defended really well as a team and snuffed out any danger and that's going to be something that, that England is going to have to break down obviously to, if they're going to win this game yeah, Germany pressed very effectively, Sue, and it doesn't seem to matter the type of opposition that they play. I saw their game against Austria and the France game, and in both cases, you say they hunt in packs, they will put pressure on from the front, and they make themselves incredibly difficult to play through. Yeah, they absolutely smothered Germ uh, France the other night. Um, you know, as I said, those danger players in the wide areas, they they weren't allowed to turn, they weren't allowed to get one on one with the fullbacks. They the the midfield player there was always a midfield player coming over to support the fullback. The winger was there supporting, and they just hunted in packs, as you say, and smothered out that danger. And they put so much physically into that game in the first half of the night. I was actually concerned going into the second half that they mightn't have enough left in the tank. Um, and especially, uh, you know, the fact that France got that um, goal just before half time, and they were going to have that bit of momentum with them in the second half because just before that, for 10 or 15 minutes before that, you could see that weakness in the French that, I, again, I've spoken about before that I also think is there at the Spanish. The heads were dropping. They were giving out to each other. There was misplaced passes. It looked like some players maybe, you know, weren't up for the challenge. So I thought the momentum might swing with the equaliser. But the Germans just continue to do in the second half what they were doing all first half. And they're physically very, very fit and they press so well all over the pitch. That's really a big strength of theirs and it's going to be difficult for England to break that down. The Germany captain, Alex Pop, has spoken a few times in the tournament about how thankful she was that it went back by a year so that she was able to play. And she's spoken about how previously she was injured and missed major tournaments. And she's here to kind of make an impression and to make up maybe for lost time. She has been so clinical. And I was watching the Koi gig pod and Karen Duggan was making the point yesterday that one of the things England will have to deal with with Pop is that she's got a very different kind of physical profile compared to some of the other attackers that England will have to defend against. We're talking about a player who is ravenous coming into the tournament, who will, again, as you mentioned, press along with her teammates and who's been tremendously clinical in front of goal throughout the tournament too. Yeah. Alexandra Pop's been around a long time. And um, when I was managing the under-19s, uh, our under-19s back in up to 2010, she was um, an underage player. We came across her a few times uh, as an underage player with Germany and it was obvious the talent she had and she brought something so different. Her physicality, uh, she's a big presence uh, on and off the pitch um, and her ability, obviously. And for sure, this is something that England maybe haven't faced and be a real test, particularly for, for Millie Bright. But, you know, I, I'm so happy for, for Alexandra Pop. It's, it's a great story. She She's missed the last two European championships through injury, the 2013-2017 edition. Uh, the Germans won in 2013. They didn't in, in 2017, but she missed both of those. And as you say, she would have missed this tournament if it had been on last year. I think she only came back in April from injury. Um, didn't start the tournament. Uh, Schuller was in ahead of her, but got in and came on and scored. And then Schuller got uh, COVID and she stayed in ever since and she scored in every game. And what goals she scored. I mean, her header the other night, the first goal was a fantastic goal. It really was. But I just thought her header was superb. You know, the the, the movement, the, the power and the desire. And that's going to be something that England are, you know, are really going to have to try and nullify because she's such a powerful header of the ball. And she's probably one of the best in, in the women's game herself. I put her up there with Abby Wombach from the, the States, who was a fantastic header of the ball as well. You know, so that's going to be, a, a, that's going to be something that will be, you know, I'm sure and are working on and how to notify that but yeah what a player and what a story for her and you know I, I do hope England win the tournament but on the other hand you're, you're looking at Alexandra Pop and wouldn't be good if um, her if Germany won it yeah absolutely not and as you said Sue that, that power how do you stop a player like that it, it, it seems near impossible like as you said her two goals it was impossible at times. She got her foot to it, but the power she got to it, even though she yeah. just barely could fully get her full foot to it yeah. in that first yeah. goal and the header. How do you nullify yeah. a player like that? 
you have to try and cut out the service, I guess, is the first part, you know, and then if you can't do that, because you're not going to do that all the time either, and especially with Jeremy, like their wingers are so good and they're so fast and, um, you know, they hoot on one side and brand on the other. And I'd say um, Bool might come back into the equation if her, she's recovered from COVID. That's the number 19 who played wide on the left. She, again, has been super for them and they're the supply chain for Pop, you know, and Pop drops into midfield as well and sets up play. Like she's a great hold up centre forward. But for those crosses coming out of the box, you just you have to double up on her. You have to try to disrupt her, put her off her rhythm. But she has such desire and, you know, power. Um, and you can see the way she celebrates as well. Like it, it means so much to her. It's just going to be very, very difficult. It really is. So when it comes to the occasion, like we've talked about records tumbling along the way and, you know, Camp Nou earlier this year where we had a classical between Real Madrid and Barcelona and the place is packed to the rafters. Wembley is going to be packed. There's been good attendances across this tournament. In many ways, England was probably the perfect place to host this, but it's going to be a very special occasion for Wembley this coming Sunday for this final. Yeah, yeah, and that occasion could get to the English players, you know, um, because the expectation on them now is growing, the weight on their shoulders. Um, I, I'm in London at the moment in, in my sister's and she lives around the corner from where the, the uh, team hotel is and there's helicopters going over all the time and they never see helicopters, you know. But yeah, the weight is growing, the weight of expectation is growing on the English team. The, as you said, the the, um, the records have been, you know, breaking in every round. They're, they're expecting over 80,000 on, uh, on, on Sunday. There's a clamour for tickets. People are paying crazy money now for tickets. And I think it's going to, it's going to, break the record for a uh, European final men and women. I think the, the highest record is uh, 69,000 in the men's one some years ago. That could get to the to the players. Um, I'm sure they've all the right people around them to try, make sure it doesn't. But at the end of the day, we're only human. People are only human. Players are only human. Um, and and that's the piece that I worry about because they have all the skill England have. They, they have players that can come off the bench and change the game you know the players on the pitch that can change the game they're going to have the crowd behind them the momentum behind them you're just hoping that they start well and they don't let the occasion get to them because you know as a player there's nothing as bad as if you don't perform to the best of your ability uh on the pitch you know if you let the occasion get to you so hopefully it doesn't but what an occasion it's going to be i think the germans will relish that they're used to playing in front of big crowds that's not going to really face them i wouldn't think um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how England deal with that. Yeah, remarkable to see 12 million Germans watch the game against France during the week as well, which is a huge TV audience. And I was even thinking for here, Sue, it's probably no great coincidence. It was a killer that Ireland didn't get to go to a world, to a European Championships, which were on our doorstep, uh, which would have been fantastic if they had got through against Ukraine and qualified. But the World Cup qualifier is very much on the horizon. I think it's no coincidence that Talis sold out really quickly this week for the upcoming World Cup qualifier against Finland. That's probably the knock-on effect of this. People are watching some good football on the TV right now and there's a clamour for tickets here uh, to watch Vera Pau's side over the next while as well. Yeah and that's a knock on effect you know and the coverage has been great on TV and everyone in the games have been on and you know on regular TV you haven't had to go on the internet look at them as such and you know the analysts have been great and it's great to see our own players there analysing the game you know and they're the role models for the young kids um, but yeah that match the game against Finland has sold out in six minutes or something I think I went on about an hour later to get some tickets from my nieces and missed out but you know that that the game is growing everywhere and um i think having the tournament so close to us in england and you know i mean even the men's side of the game we we always look to to the men's game here and we were big followers of it and you know i think we're big followers of the women's game here in england as well we know a lot of the players our own players have played with many of them um they've been teammates our teammates with them you know and i think I, I I think it will have even a, a better knock on effect of England win um, for us. I think it'll raise the profile, you know, of the game. And yeah, it's just, it's growing everywhere and it's great. It's great to see. I think that's going to be the big legacy from this tournament, you know, those big attendances and new fans coming into the sport. And it's not just women and girls, it's men, it's it's families, it's older men, younger men, younger women, older women. And, and that's what you want to see, you know, it's football at the end of the day and yeah, it's just great to see the interest there now. Yeah, no, the product's been really good at the Euros as well. You've mentioned that you want England to win on Sunday, but who are you expecting to win on Sunday? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to stick with them now. I, I I haven't gone against them yet, even though I was looking dodgy there against Spain. I'm going to say two one England. 
Okay. Um, and I could go to extra time. I could go all the way. Um, but I, I'm going to stick my neck out and say 2-1 England. Not sure the English would be able to take the uh, excitement to penalties against Germany if it was to go that far, but we'll see how we go. I'm not, I'm not sure they would, no. <laughs> Sue, enjoy the occasion at Wembley. It's going to be a great one on Sunday afternoon. Will do. Thanks, lads.